Hey, it's Justin, and today I'm in Palm Springs at my friend Toby's house where we are creating a top-of-the-line smart home. And usually these things take months and months, but we're on Justin time, so let's get there now. Oh my God, wow, it worked. Let's face it, we're all spending more time in our homes these days. So with this series, I wanna show you all the ways you can connect your tech to enhance and automate your home. And I wanna give a huge shout out to my sponsors, Amazon and Philips Hue. In this series, we'll show you all the consumer products we've chosen, tested, and woven in to create a seamless and intuitive smart home. Dinner is now being served. We'll cover everything from building and renovating a house with the smart home in mind, and all the tech powering it to make your home and life more convenient and enjoyable. We'll explore all the different areas of a home, from the kitchen to the living room to your outdoor space, and what makes up a home from the lighting to the security. We'll also explore the brains, accessories, command centers, and voice commands we've programmed to automate your home. Start my morning. Good morning, Justin. And with all these systems in place, we'll show off how you can take advantage of connected tech to make watching a movie or having a romantic evening ready at the tap of a button. This is the ultimate smart home series. Attention, we will be referring to Alexa throughout the series. So if you or a loved one are around an Echo or Alexa enabled device watching this, you might want to turn off the microphone for the episode. Thank you and enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Smart Home Series. I'm Justin Tech, I'm your host, and I guarantee you I'm not being held here against my will. Right Alexa? Justin, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, before we start, I have a couple really important people to introduce you to. First off, none of this would be possible if it weren't for my best friend, mentor, and homeowner, Toby. I've always been a tech lover, but this guy got me into smart home tech, and together we've taken this house to the next level. And then there's my friend Max. He's a rising TikTok star and Animal Crossing enthusiast, but he doesn't know anything about smart homes. He will act as our control group throughout the series, like a dummy thick lab rat. In this first episode, I'm going to talk to Toby about how he renovated this house with the smart home in mind. Then I'll go over the brains, basically all the hubs you'll need to create an ultimate smart home, but not too smart. We don't want a Hal or Pat situation. Before we get into all that, let's get a little background and talk to Toby about how he renovated the house to prepare. Hi, Toby. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good to be here. Thank you for allowing us in your home as well. Thank you for allowing me. Uh, so first question, how did you wire this place? Well, I really wanted to make it future proof. So I decided to put Cat6 cabling in all the rooms because Cat6 can be converted into basically anything you can think of. Every room has wired internet access and the TVs are also wired so you have perfect signal pretty much in every room. Yeah, and we also put an Eero Wi-Fi mesh system throughout the house. That way our Wi-Fi system is super strong, yeah. basically giving us Wi-Fi throughout the whole and house. What I liked about the Eero system is that it can basically be wireless or plugged in. And because my house is so spread out, I wanted to plug in each device so that it would give the best signal in whatever area of the house you're in. I wired all the rooms with stereo speakers. You know, it creates a clean look. And then all the wires come to my AV closet where they can be plugged in and controlled with a variety of different amps. Because I'm also thinking of like resale value of the home in the future. So if someone wants to switch it out, they can easily change out a component and put in whatever devices they want. You also wired the house with an alarm system, right? Why did you do that? Yeah, since I was remodeling the house and I had a lot of the walls open, I decided to install a wire security system because the sensors are built into the door frame so you don't see them. Also, it allows like the next person to come in to put in a wired alarm system if they want, and it could make the house more valuable because you just have more options to install whatever type of a system you want. Toby, from the day I met you, you have always told me that accent lighting is key. 
Why and how have you implemented it around your house? Accent lighting is really key in setting the mood in any room you're in. So in the kitchen, I added a soffit ceiling. I put some light strips around 3D tile. And in the bedroom, I did a tray ceiling to add a really cool ambient look above the bed. I actually made it 33 feet, which is the maximum length of a hue light strip with all the extensions. In the master bathroom, I decided to bring the wall out a bit to create a space for accent lights on either side of the toilet. And I went with a floating vanity so I could add strip lights under the sink. If you had any advice to give someone that's starting a smart home, what would it be? I think it's really important to plan ahead, install outlets wherever you think you're gonna put a hue light strip. I had several outlets installed in the attic so that I could put a simple hole through the ceiling and then plug in a light strip. Well, Toby, thank you so much for coming today and talking with us. No, thank you. This is my house, don't forget. <laughs> All right, does the audience have any questions? Yes, you, Max. Uh, so you're talking about these smart home devices? How do you get them to work in conjunction? Well, let's head over to Smart Home 101 to find out. Welcome to class, kids. School is now in session. I'm your hot but sensitive teacher, Mr. Tech. Most of the tech we're gonna show you this episode are consumer products. You can install them yourselves. However, you may need an electrician to install a wired or specialized light or switch depending on your comfort level. I'll place links to products we bring up in the description below. And feel free to comment on this video with any questions you may have. But don't forget, I can see all the messages in the Zoom chat after class, Daniel. When building a smart home, there are four main components, music, lighting, home entertainment, and security. There are many different types of wireless technologies these smart home devices speak in. Let's call them languages. The most well-known, of course, are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi but there's also Zigbee, Z-Wave, ClearConnect, and a few others. Because these devices all speak in different languages, we'll need a main hub or brain to be our universal translator. Its function is to understand and direct all of these hubs together so you as the user can create scenes that involve all of them. When choosing our hubs and systems, we made sure they all worked well with our brain. Our brain in this house is the SmartThings Hub by Samsung. In our opinion, SmartThings is the best commercial home automation platform for a few reasons. While it's not perfect, we found it's much easier to work remotely with, it's less convoluted than other systems, and there's an app for your phone. There's actually two, but that's a whole other conversation. They've also opened up their platform to third-party developers, opening the doors to unlimited possibilities. Their smartphone app allows you to connect all of your hubs and devices like speakers, lights, switches, blinds, etc., and organize them in rooms and groups. Once I have all of my devices and smart things, I can create scenes like movie mode, where all of my living room down lights go to 5%, my kitchen lights turn off, and blinds close and my TV and Fire TV turn on. I can also create automations, which are basically if this, then that type situations. So for example, for our bedroom blinds, we created if it's 15 minutes after sunset, then close the blinds. SmartThings also gives us the ability to program a smart home command center using action tiles and brilliant smart switches, both of which I'll go into next episode. Now back to Justin for a presentation on all of our smart home components that will earn him some extra credit. Class dismissed. Thanks, Mr. Tech. <sighs> Let's start with lighting. We have two systems of smart lighting in our home. First, there's Philips Hue. If you follow my channel, Hue, probably know who they are. They have the largest selection of indoor and outdoor smart lights, and they have an ever-growing ecosystem of compatible third-party apps and decorative light fixtures and switches through Friends of Hue. This is the Philips Hue Bridge. I recommend everyone get it for their Philips Hue setup. You can connect up to 50 lights and create scenes and automations. I do hope that they raise that number in the future though. With the Philips Hue Bridge, we get access to the Philips Hue app, which has a bunch of capabilities. The first thing you see is a bunch of rooms and zones I've created. Right here is the TV wall zone. I can change the brightness up here. And then there's a bunch of preset scenes and you can also create your own scenes. Here you can see all the different lights. You can change them individually. And then I love this. This is the color wheel. You can change them like this. And then you can also stack them on top of each other, move them around together and then go in and take them out. We're using Philips Hue lights in some fun and unique ways around the house. And I can't wait to show it all off in our Philips Hue episode. Next is Lutron. 
We're using Lutron light switches to make our standard light fixtures smart. We're also using switches to power most of our recessed lighting, which can be much more cost effective than buying a whole bunch of smart lights. For these cases, we're using the Lutron RAW 2 Select Hub. Fun fact, Ra is the sun god. Ra, 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 ah, ah. Lutron offers two different hubs, but we chose the Ra 2 over the Caseta because it gives you up to 100 devices instead of 75 and the ability to expand your system with a repeater. They work with a wider variety of smart blinds and they have these really great Pico remotes with engraved scenes, which are grandpa proof. We want our guests to easily understand and control our smart home lights and scenes, and these really help. For home entertainment, we chose a couple systems. The first one is the Fire TV Cube. This not only acts as a media player where you can watch all your favorite apps, but it's also a universal remote. And of course, Alexa is built in. The Fire TV Cube comes with an IR blaster that allows you to control your TV, receiver, soundbar, as well as some other media players and game consoles. And it also comes with a remote you can use for voice control, which can replace the IR blaster. Personally, I like the blaster because I don't need to worry about the remote being in line of sight. Setting it up to control my TV was remarkably simple and easy. It was completely automated. I could send one to my mom and she'd have no issue setting it up. Yeah, mom, I'm calling you out for your lack of tech knowledge. Love you. Let me show you some commands I've been using. Alexa, turn on the TV. She's gonna turn it on. Yay. So I can also turn the TV off, I can change the volume with my voice, and I can also ask Alexa to turn on certain shows or apps like this. Alexa, turn on The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Getting The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel from Prime Video. For our advanced setup in the living room, where our devices are hidden and we're incorporating lighting into scenes, we're using the Logitech Harmony remote and hub. These devices act as a universal remote and physical smart home controller. They have a few different remotes, and I know it sounds weird, but they all feel incredibly nice in your hands. What? These remotes give you the ability to program activities and control them with the tap of a button. Here in Toby's room, we have the Logitech remote set up so we can use Alexa commands. We're gonna turn on the projector, lower the projector screen, turn on the receiver and our media player and bring all of the lights down. Alexa, turn on watch a movie. I also have these buttons at the bottom that control individual lights or groups of lights. So if I click this button, it will turn on the dining room chandelier and then I can dim or brighten them with these buttons right here. Next up is music. Earlier we explained how our house is wired for speakers. To take full advantage of that, we're using Sonos as our music system. Sonos works with our Lutron switches, Logitech Harmony scenes, our command centers, Alexa, and SmartThings. And in our opinion, they are the leader in the whole home audio solutions because there are so many ways to connect your speakers, like these Bauer and Wilkins speakers we have back here, or the Sonos Move, which actually has Alexa support, and I absolutely love taking Alexa out by the pool. Alexa, do you remember what happened on days of our lives yesterday? Why yes, Justin, I do. Toby, tell me about your Sonos system. What's going on? So I wound up getting an amp so I could use my existing Sonos Connects for the bedrooms. I have bedroom four, three, two, and then I also have the new port, which does um, AirPlay 2, which is great. And this is for the living room speakers, which is connected into the Denon receiver. And the port is basically replacing these older models, right? Yeah, so the port is the newer version of this. As you can see, it's smaller, and it also adds um, Apple AirPlay to it as well. Yeah, and Sonos is updating their system, and all of the new features that are coming won't work on the older Sonos system. And obviously, for our setup, the whole house is wired, so we had to have one for each room, but in other homes, you can use their wireless system, which is really great. Later in this series, we'll show you a way to use Amazon Alexa as your music system, which absolutely blows my mind. Security is the last component of the smart home, and I'm gonna go into detail on that in the next episode. The last and perhaps the most important decision of our smart home is the AI we chose to use. It's the Jarvis to your Tony Stark. You'll want a voice assistant so you can control your scenes and other tasks for those times when you don't want to get out a nap or have your hands full. Alexa, start cocktail hour. 
Let's take a look at what just happened. Some Lutron switches turned off and others dimmed. We had two Amazon smart plugs activate, our Hue scene started, and our Samsung TV turned on in ambient mode. Our Nano Leaf lit up and our Axis gear was triggered, closing the blinds. We chose Alexa as our Prime AI for a few reasons. First, we're Amazon Prime members, so we get alerts from Alexa telling us our packages were delivered. And most importantly, there are an incredible amount of smart home devices that incorporate Alexa, more than 100,000. And Amazon has a huge family of devices and accessories that keep growing and growing. There's the Echo Dot, the Echo Dot with Clock, the Echo Show, the Echo Show 5, the Amazon Smart Plug, Echo Studio, Echo Sub, Fire TV Cube. I think you get the point. For anyone who wants a simpler setup, you can use the Amazon Alexa as your main hub for your smart home. You can create rooms, groups, routines, and scenes right on the Alexa app. I also recommend opening up the web client, which gives you a much bigger screen to work on. One day, we will be using our brains to control our smart home. But for now, Alexa brings us one step closer. And if the whole brains communicating with technology fascinates you as much as it does me, then you have to read up on Neuralink, owned by Elon Musk. Okay, enough tangent. Now that we've covered all the hardware powering our smart home, the next few episodes will explore how we're implementing them throughout the house and in conjunction with one another. I'm going to show you the accessories we're using, how we've integrated Alexa, show you all the lighting scenes and fixtures, and cook up a storm in our smart kitchen. If there are any devices I mentioned in this video that really tickle your fancy, let me know in the comments and I might decide to make a dedicated video Video on that product. Same goes for if you have questions about anything I talk about through the series. I want to start a community that leads to conversations where people can show off their cool smart home setups and help each other out. Because home is where the tech is. <laughs> Stay tuned for a lot more smart home coming every Thursday. This year we're channeling hashtag smart girl summer. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel, click that bell for alerts, and if you enjoyed this video give me a big old like. I'm Justin and I'll tech you later. Toby, I love your rack. Toby, nice rack. Tell me about it.